months or three years with that kind of energy because it's all about energy, enthusiasm and passion and belief in yourself. And you've got it now, my friend. So this is the thing, guys. If you can do it up here, because I know it's, you know, I know what it's like. I've been there. When I first started, I was, I was crapping myself. I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> literally crapping myself. But after a couple of times, you overcome the fear of doing it because it's about fear, right? And fear is something you make up in your own mind to stop you doing something, to stop you growing because you're afraid of success. You're afraid to change. You're afraid to change your friends, change your money, change your environment. But now you can see you can change in a heartbeat. You can change in a heartbeat. Simple as that. You have done it, my friend. Now you just need to capitalize and move forward because you've got the power. So what you need to do, I don't have time to do role plays all day because we've got some more content we need to learn fast and we need to get it mastered by today. And the next thing we need to master is overcoming objections, right? Now, when you start getting better at what you do, when you start presenting to people, you're going to get more resistance. You are going to get more resistance, not less resistance. You're going to get more. Because simply you're more excited, you've got more personal power. So people kind of like, oh, what's, what's this? This is different. So people are going to wonder what the hell you're doing, why are you doing it? And they're going to, you know, they're going to have concerns about what you're doing. They're going to ask questions, maybe, you know, that, that you can't answer. And you've got to be ready with the right answers. And how you handle an objection is actually 50% of closing a deal. Let me repeat that. How you handle an objection is 50% of what you do when you close business. And you've got to respond to those objections immediately, without hesitation. So that means you have to be a master of handling objections. There's only two ways to increase sales, Mr. Cheng. Share more benefits, overcome more objections. That's it. Share benefits, objections, handling. That's it. Two ways to improve your sales. An objection is a concern. Where does a concern come from? It's a doubt, but where does the doubt come from? From the mind. Not enough information to make a decision. Right. A doubt and a concern comes from a sign of interest. Right? So a concern comes from an interest. That means when people give you an objection, it means they are interested in what you're doing. And what they're trying to do is justify in their own mind the belief that you have in the same thing because they might be interested in doing what you're doing. So they have to believe it before they can do it, yes or no? Yes. So they have to overcome all those hurdles in their own mind, not just your mind, not just in the presentation. So a concern comes from interest. Interest comes from where? Desire. Correct. Interest comes from desire. Now here's the ironic thing that nobody understands very much in sales. When you create more desire, you'll create more objections. <coughs> yes, wow. That means people are going to give you more objections. A lot of people say to me, Marco, when I get really good at this, I'm going to have less objections, aren't I? No one's going to resist, right? I said, no, they're going to give you more objections. <laughs> they're going to give you ten times more objections. How do you feel about that? What, 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 what do you mean? I said they're going to give you ten times more objections than ordinary people who are not really interested. Because people who are not interested are not even thinking about putting themselves into the business opportunity. So why would they bother asking you an objection? Yes. Why would they bother resisting? Because they're not interested. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Yes. Right? Yes. Now we've got a lot of people in this room this week and some of those people are experienced people who've presented many times do you understand and agree with what I'm saying to you today? Yes. Right? Have you experienced objections? Yes. Yes. So what you have to do is you have to have a repertoire, and a repertoire is a library of answers or responses to certain objections that you get. A repertoire. So a repertoire is having responses ready. Now if you remember yesterday we had Morgan and Celia and the response was they didn't have the time to do the business. Yes. Do you remember that objection? Yes. 
You're going to get that a lot. That's a very common objection. Okay, and what you've got to do is you've got to be able to handle it so coolly, so confidently, in such a fantastic manner that people will dismiss the objection after a while. <coughs> now, you shared with me last night that your friend said, I don't like MLM. I have a problem with MLM. So you've got to learn how to respond to that. Can anyone tell me how you will respond to that objection, the people that are not experienced in this business? I'm not experienced in this business. I know. Uh, that is the answer that I'm going to give her. Uh, um, that friend saying that they got problem with MLM. Yeah. I will tell them, uh, do I look like an MLM person? Okay. Okay. If that is my answer. That's your answer. Yes. Okay. Anybody else? Can we ask another what question? Is what is your qualification of an MLM? Anything else? What is your problem with an MLM? What is your problem? Oof. <laughs> <laughs> you got a problem, mofo? <laughs> I would say I completely agree with you. If I was you, I would have to What you do, if they say they hate MLM or they don't like MLM, you know what? I also hate MLM and I don't like MLM. <laughs> right? The first thing you must do with an objection is agree. Number one, that's it. Number one rule, you must agree with them. If they say to you, I don't like your clothes, you know what, I don't like my clothes either. Thanks for sharing that with me. I'm just about to go to the shop and buy some new ones. Huh? After I close your sale, I'm going to buy a new outfit. <laughs> well done, lads, you! Like it. So the first thing you've got to do is agree with their objection, even if you don't agree with it. So, Dinesh, when you say to them, what is your problem with MLM? <laughs> what, what you're basically doing then is you are putting your finger in their eye and going like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're invading their, their, their ego, right? Yes, Rita? You could say that, but at this stage, with that particular objection, you answer it that way. Right? Some objections you answer, how do you mean? Some objections you answer, uh, you obviously got a great reason for saying that. Do you mind sharing it with me, please? Right? But right now, that objection, you don't. You agree with them completely. Without hesitation. Because we are not MLM. We're not MLM anyway. <laughs> We're not lying, right? So that's how you would do that, Lisa. So I want you to try that next time. So the first thing is you agree with it. Then what do you do? What you do is you seek to understand where it's coming from. Right? So you have to clarify it. But first of all is you agree with it. Now once you agree with it, actually the objection might disappear. So you don't, sometimes you don't have to clarify it. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Sometimes you go, oh, oh, okay. Um, 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 when you say, well, it's not, I also hate MLM, they go, oh, because they don't expect you to say that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. They don't expect to say that. They go, oh, um, they'll go, oh, what is it then? That's what they're going to say to you. They're going to go, oh, what, well, what is it then if it's not MLM? <laughs> what happens what? If they keep quiet, what do you do? No, you keep quiet. Not copycat, you just, what you're doing is you are agreeing with them and keeping your mouth shut because they haven't, that's it. So the strength of a person, the strength of a closer is how strong you are in waiting for their response next, because you've already responded. It's like a tennis match, the ball is in their court now. So you're waiting for them to hit the ball back. So you don't ask a question because you've got no balls left. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you borrow Lisa's. 
and they're too big to hit. You know, like that. Once you've hit the ball, you've got no more balls left to hit. You're waiting for them to respond, yes or no. Yes. So shut the hell up. And don't say, what's your problem? You're not responding to me. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to list down all the objections that you're getting. So first objection is not enough time. People actually do say, I don't have the, the balls to do this, or the courage. You hate rejection. Can't take it, ma! What happens if your company cannot deliver? Any more? 22. Huh? Teen C's, terms and conditions. Unethical. Unethical. This afternoon you're going to be role playing every single one of these objections. Every single one. Every single one. Yes, sir. Because if you can't do that, then you can't do this business. <laughs> now I'm going to give you responses, and some of the responses are the same for different objections. Right, so you need to understand and write down which objections and categorise them like Iqbal has just mentioned with the same response. Okay, so first one, not enough time. Does anyone know the answer for this one? I also don't have time. With every objection you have to agree with them and paraphrase them. So you have to agree with the words that come out of their mouth. So you can say to them, what you're saying is you don't have enough time. Okay. You know what? I don't have enough time either. I completely agree with you. If I was you, I would be saying the same thing completely. That's response number one to that objection. Now, do you remember what I did with Morgan and Sally yesterday? Yes. Did anyone enjoy that objection handling? Yes. Right, so how did I handle it? The first thing I did, the first thing I did was say, say listen, are you interested in financial independence or not? So the first response is, you know what, I don't have enough time either. And this is what you can say as a generic response after that. You say, you know what, most people who join this business said exactly the same as you, that they don't have enough time. Those same people have ended up becoming our best agents, making the best money, and I've ended up referring all of their friends to their own business. And I've stopped working. Now, they're going to respond differently, but a lot of them are going to say... What do you mean? How do you mean? What do you mean? So you repeat what you just said. Because sometimes you have to repeat that with a lot of... a lot of energy and a lot of conviction. Right? Remember, you've got to establish conviction in your presentation. So when you answer and respond to an objection, you have to be very convincing. Because you've got to mean what you say, congruently. Okay? So you know what? Everybody who joins this business says exactly the same thing as you. You know what? Those people have become our best agents, made the most money, and referred their friends, family, network in their own business, and they've actually stopped working. What you need to get is you all need to have a zip on your mouth. And when you, once you've responded that way, do that. Because you don't talk then. You wait for them to respond in as you don't go say, 
What is your problem, mofo? You're not responding. <laughs> After my objection handling strategy technique that I learned from Marco Robinson. <laughs> Would you like me to repeat it? Yes. yes. Right. You know what? That's what everybody says when they first join this business. They've got no time, not enough time. But those people who join have ended up becoming our best agents and making the most money and have referred all their friends, their family and their contacts to this business and have stopped working! Wow, wow. <laughs> but if they listen to someone like, you know, with that kind of response, they go, ooh, bloody hell. They really believe what they're doing, even though they don't, they're not joining yet, but they still know you believe it. That makes a huge difference in people's decision-making processes, yes or no? Yes. Right, so you, you shut the hell up when you, when you said that. And then they might say, you know, I don't, I don't know, still the time thing. Then you break the time down, the 24-hour thing. Say, so how many hours do you say, first of all, are you interested in financial independence, yes or no? When do you plan to retire? How soon would you like to retire? Do you remember we talked about the survey in the beginning? Yes, yes. Yeah. Then you get the survey out that they, that they went through with you and put it in front of them and you go through it again. You go through the survey again with them. Remember what you said, Mr. Morgan, you said if you can, can continue working the way you are, you're going to finish work at 55, you're going to have three years left to have money and after that you're going to have to start working again. Remember that? How would you feel if that was you? Can you see why so many people are joining this business today even though they don't have enough time? And let's break the day down. So you go, right, how many hours in the day? 24. How many hours do you work? Write this down, what I'm doing now. <coughs> how many hours in a day? How many hours do you work? How many hours do you sleep? Eight. How many hours do you eat? Malaysians, eight hours, right? <laughs> How many hours do you eat a day? Four. Four? One hour. One hour. One hour. One hour. Watch TV? Yeah. yeah. Right, so therefore you've got 19, you've got five hours left. Now, I'm not going to be hard on you, I'm just going to take one hour of the five. Because if you did one hour a day, which is six hours a week, how many, how many people could they recruit in six hours? Right, so... That's three recruits. Now let's, let's take the worst case scenario. Let's say they only recruited agents. Not grandmaster, not master agents, only agents. Right? How much commission is that a week? 30%? 990. Right. That's 990 ringgit. So if they're making 4,000 ringgit a month, that's very relevant to them. Yes. You understand what I'm saying to you, everybody? Yes. So you've got to work your figures out depending what they're earning. If they're making 10k a month, then you would say three grandmaster agents or, you know, one master agent, whatever, whatever it may be. Now, if you do that, for one year, how many recruits will you have? Fifty-two weeks times three is 156 recruits. Okay? If you have 156 recruits and only 10% of those recruits, would you like me to continue with this argument? Yes. yes. Only 10% of those recruits, 15 people, they recruited, those 15 people recruited A hundred people each. How much money would you make? Five hundred times a hundred is how much? 
No, it's 50,000, right? So that means you'd make 150,000 in overrides the next year. And I'm not saying that all 150 are going to do anything. I'm just saying 10%. Is that fair? Yes. Right? They're going to make 150,000 ringgit. Your salary is 10,000 ringgit. When would you like to give up work? Do you like that? Yes. Mr. Morgan, do you like that? Yes. Yes. Because you have, to, you have to get people to see in black and white the numbers. So they can see in a year they could give up work. And trust me, everybody wants to give up work. It's not even, that's not even seminar commit, no other streams of income, no corporate commission, no recruit with your own, not even doing anything. It's 900k, isn't it? So if only three did it, that's 150k. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I always work in worst case scenario, what I believe to be realistic, you know? Yeah, I was wondering how come you're going all the way. Yeah, I'm not going all the way, I'm going, hmm. Because you've got to show people, if you only work one hour a week, that's what you could do, but if you, you know, you work 10 minutes a week, you could do that. You see what I mean? You can break it down. Is this a good business or not, my friend? Yes. Because if you recruit one fantastic recruiter, only one. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You made for life. You made for life. So if they recruit a hundred grandmaster agents, how much money do you make if you recruit one agent? Baljaj, how many? <coughs> if you got one in, in one year. Yeah. Okay. If, if one agent of your downline recruits a hundred grandmaster agents. You get 5% of that. If your direct downline, the one that you recruited, keeps recruiting, yeah. you get 5% all the time. I got 5% of the recruitment fees. 5% of the recruitment fee. Which is 11,000. Which might be 1,000, 7,000, or it might be GMP uh, of 19,000. Is this a good business, yes or no? Yes. So what MLM companies do is they, they insist on a maintenance payment every month, mm. right? And once you pay that, then basically the company makes money from the maintenance payments. It doesn't really make money from the commission payout because MLM companies are paying up to 80% commissions out. Right. Now, we can't afford to do that because our products cost us more than that. Right. Do you get what I mean? Yes. So a lot of people, when they join an MLM business, the, the, you've got to really look at the products because the products mostly are crap, mm. yeah. right? So. There's only very few. There are some really good MLM companies out there. You know, Onway's a good one, USANA, um, New Skin. These are good, very good. The products are very good. But still, they have to pay maintenance every month. And the maintenance is on each account. So if you want to pay maintenance every month, then I, I can offer you an MLL pl MLM plan if you want. <laughs> no, the reason I asked was because yeah. here's one level. Obviously, yeah. if you have more levels, you get to make from you know, all those levels. Yes. Well, <clears throat> so my question was, <clears throat> Why wouldn't you not want to make this business into the MLM concept? Just from that idea, from that perspective. Yeah, we, we are, but we, we're not, we couldn't do exactly the same business. Okay. We'd have to restructure the whole thing and make it another business. Right. But as well as you recruit below you as many as possible. Yes. Then you get an, uh, the focus on what you are exactly. actually trying to do. And the thing is, what you've got to also look at is, is you're in a very unique business because you're selling to companies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right? Companies don't like you if you're MLM. Right, they have a massive stigma about that. There is a negative perception, yeah. So actually, the, the, the compensation plan you've got now is pretty much perfect for this business. Yeah. Now, there, there, there have been companies in the past that have done an MLM business with vacations like we do but they've gone bankrupt after about a year because they cannot afford to redeem the vacations because they're paying too much commissions out. Everyone has failed. Trust me, I've done tons of research. Everyone's failed because of that. So the, the reason that we succeed is because we've got three streams, main streams of income, recruitment, corporate, and selling the, of, of the products. Actually, said, I've been doing this business. I start, started it in a small way in 2001. Right, on my own with a staff of five people. And I was just selling to people that I knew. 
because there was enough income from the people I knew to justify opening an office. Didn't have any agents, didn't have any resorts. What we did was bought the rooms as we went, we went along. All right, and um, we did well, and I had a partner, and, a, and a, I bought the partner out. And in 2004, I set Max Generation up, did it on my own. And in 2006, I started this business in this process, like recruiting agents. Um, now, in the past, f that's five years now, yes. right? So in the past five years, we have been able to secure room rights to many hotels where we get a very cheap deal. So we can buy ad hoc and we can also buy like, the minimum purchase we can buy is 100 rooms. So sometimes when we get a corporate client, for example, like Hoya, right, what we do is, is we know how much they're going to redeem, so we might buy 1,000 rooms. Now we don't, buy, we don't pay cash for those rooms, we have terms of payment. And we have a very tight contract, if they don't use the room we get some money back. So our contracts are very tight and very well managed. And that's also given us the cash flow to buy our own property. So we've bought property in Bali, we've bought property in KL, which now members are enjoying. Well, you know, people, clients are enjoying. That's how we do it. There would be a new problem. We have a property in Times Square, which is be, will be ready by May. Vijaya Times Square. But because we're new, and if you're an entrepreneur, you have to create things. And they're not perfect, and it, you know, it takes time so what we could do is we could wait till everything's perfect and then launch the business. No. 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 <laughs> but then we'd have to, you wouldn't be here, you wouldn't be making any money, right? So the business is great enough as it is to make lots of money, lots of people happy, etc, etc. It's not going to please everybody all of the time. That's not our objective. But you know what, all the people, the best people that joined these people also said they had no money. But they ended up becoming our best agents made the most money, and referred other friends and family to us. <laughs> and started working a year later. <laughs> That's how you respond, same category, right? right? Spouse permission. Same category. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, you need to get your, your, your wife's permission. You know what, I totally agree. If I was you, I'd also need to get my wife's permission. Definitely, and have no sex for the rest of my life. <laughs> right? <laughs> I totally agree with you. <laughs> But most people who joined us said exactly the same thing as you. Need to talk to the spouse. But you know what? They ended up becoming our best agents, went home to the spouse, signed them up, made more money, stopped working a year later. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> same category. <laughs> Isn't it the same category, Martin? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely right. And what you could add on there is, you know what, you must be really serious about this business because you're thinking about it. That means you're really serious. So you know what, most people who say that and are serious about it end up joining the business, making the most money, and end up re re you know, referring all the friends and the family, and start working a year later. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our family, thank you very much. Sign there, right. <laughs> Not for me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I totally agree. I totally agree. Same. Uh, not a salesperson. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter is contagious. It's the shortest connection between two people, right, Dalton? Yeah. Even you. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> not ready. Uh, been ripped off. You know what, if I was you, and I'd been, what you can say is this, if I was you, you can slightly different response, if I was you, and I'd been ripped off that many times, I would not even be talking to me. I wouldn't even bother getting out of bed. So I understand completely how you feel. That's the response to that one. Slightly different response. In fact, I don't even know why you're here. This is reverse psychology. You're taking all the pressure away from them. Right? I don't even know why you're here. If I'd been ripped off that many times, to be quite honest with you, I wouldn't even come anywhere near anybody like me. With another business opportunity. Now, 
The definition of rapport is when your prospect knows you understand them. So when you say that back to them, they definitely know you understand them. And you can go further, you say, listen, I've also been ripped off. And I have. I have personally been ripped off. Who here has not been ripped off? I don't even know why you're here. If you've been ripped off that many times, I don't even understand why you're here. If I'd been ripped off that many times, I wouldn't even pick up the call from someone about a business opportunity. That's crazy. Because what you're saying to them really is, if that's the case, what the hell are you sitting in front of me for? They're still there. <coughs> so what you're doing psychologically saying it to them is, well, if you're still there, it means that this must not be a business that's not going to rip you off. This business is not going to rip you off. That's why you're still here. That's what you're saying to them. It's what you're getting them to think about. That's what you're planting in the head. You're sowing a seed. You get what I'm saying? The other people that ripped them off didn't say to them, well, you know what, if I was here, I wouldn't even be here. They would have carried on selling the benefits. Yes. Yes. So, you know, the, what you're getting in these four days, nobody is doing out there. Yes. That means you've got a competitive advantage yes. in the marketplace. And what the great thing also is, is that you know the psychology behind what we're saying in these four days. You know the reason why, it's not just you saying it as a parrot, you know, you have the intelligence, all of you, that you understand why. And you have to understand why before you can execute it with confidence and belief. So, oh, Lajah, let's have a little bit of role play. Hmm. I'm the prospect. I've been ripped off so many times! Uh, <coughs> if I've been ripped off so many times like you before, I will probably not even be talking to myself. Yeah. I don't even know why you're here to today. And why are you talking to me? Yeah. Great, yeah? Yes. And it's very rare that you meet somebody that totally understands you. And says that they understand you. But then you go on to say, listen, quite a lot of people have said the same thing to me that have been ripped off because there's so many scams out there. I quite agree with you, right? But the people that said that and people that said they've been ripped off, they've become our most successful agents. I've referred all their friends and family into the business. I'm still working. Right? And stop working a year later! <laughs> so the worst thing you can do is close them. Mm. Isn't it? Because yes. they're scared. And they'll just run away. Even a trial close. Even a trial, nothing. No trial, nothing. What they're looking for is trust. They're looking for security. Right? How many MLM businesses have clients such as BMW? Mercedes, LG, Remy Martin, China Telecom, Citibank, BSN Bank, IKEA. How many MLM businesses have got clients like that that you know of? None. None of them! Do you really think those companies, Mr. Ming, would do business with us and buy literally hundreds of thousands of vouchers if we could not fulfill their customers with a vacation? Right? That's what you need to push to that particular objection is a credibility issue. And when those people join us and realize that all the, we had Citibank, all these customers, and show them all the logos of the customers we've got, and they're buying hundreds of thousands of vouchers, they didn't hesitate because it was the first company they saw that had credibility. Then, Dave, you can close them. Would you rather join a company with, that, with clients of that nature and that credibility and that track record, or an MLM company with no track record and no clients of that nature? What would you rather do? What you guys have got to start doing is blogging about this business and your experiences that we educate, we do things differently, we've got these clients, this is what we blah, 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 blah. All of you have got to start doing this because otherwise they're going to go to Max Tennessee, Max Generation Scam underneath it. Because the more of you start blogging, that, that uh, search will go, will go past the first page and people won't even see it anymore. And that blog is from 2009 and I've actually got a, a response to it which you can show your clients in your pitch materials. I've got a blog response to it, I'll show you later, would you like to see that? Yes. yes. Right? I've got a blog, you can show them a link and you show my response as the CEO to that blog. Yes. Very critical to your business guys, you've got to do it. But to do it, you've got to do a bit of work, you've got to start blogging. You don't have to be a good writer. I am, I'm not a graduate of school. I left school with no, no, this. 
That's why that's my favourite objection. Because <laughs> you know you can handle it. Well, you could, well, guess what? Our CEO was not educated. He had no education at all. And he says to you, it's a personal message from Mark who says to you, if you've got no education, fantastic, to completely agree with you, you would find it difficult to do any kind of business, right? How can a person with no education build a multi-million dollar business? Isn't it great to know that people who say they've got no education end up being our best agents, <laughs> refer all the friends, family, and start working a year later, even if they've got no education. Isn't that fantastic to know? Bang. But, you know, if you're... Yeah. That means you've got no compelling reason to act. Yeah. So once you've overcome that fear, you'll be, you'll, you'll be able to do it all the time. Yeah. And you know, one of the things you must learn as an individual is how to public speak. Yeah. Right? Because I, would, I was massively afraid of that. Because my fear was, what if I make a mistake when I'm on the stage? Yeah. What if I say the wrong thing? What if I don't do the right thing? Blah, blah, blah. Most of the time, I don't know what the hell I'm going to talk about when I come up here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a clue. Sometimes you go blank. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I go blank. But you know what? Being spontaneous and natural is what people connect to. They don't connect to scripts on stage. Yes. They connect to a pitch that's delivered naturally. Right? So that people love that you're normal and you make mistakes. They love that. They connect to it. It's fantastic. We've covered all of these now. Am I correct? Yes. PC phobia. So most people who say that they can't use a computer to become our best agents, refer our friends and family, and start working a year later. Right? Buy a bloody BMW. Right. Okay. Student? Right? Same. Same category. Same category, right? Never heard of Max Chen? Is that the same category? Just Google us. <laughs> what you do then is you get your sample vouchers out. You think these companies would associate with a company they've never heard of? Have you heard of Have you heard of Right. That's what you do, okay? Um, already invested. Already? Right, you can answer it like that, or you can answer it the same way as we've been answering the other ones. Okay, but you have to have a repertoire, don't forget. You can't answer the same answer if they've given you all those 12 <laughs> objections. <laughs> it, right? But yeah, I mean, you know what? Yeah, you know, if you're a student, you've got no money, you're studying, right? What are you studying? If you're a student, what are you studying? Psychology. Right, so would you agree with me that you agree with me earlier that when you're a student, it's the best place to go to learn how not to be rich? So how would you learn how to be rich and study with us? So when you get, uh, you know, mentored and trained by successful rich people, do you think that's going to make a difference to your income, yes or no? That's, well, fantastic. You know what? People who say that have ended up becoming our best agents. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't have the money to join. No problem. No money, no honey. But with us, you get the honey without the money. <laughs> 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 because we have a universal sucker in our team. <laughs> <laughs> you just vary it a little bit, but there's every way to overcome. Now, if anyone would like me to answer differently to any of those objections, please ask me now, because I'm here now. Okay. The cheapest entry level now is our student starting treasure special at 295 ringgit. Oh, we don't have that. You, you will have that in March. We don't have that. You will have it in March. Well, we have, uh, then there's no objection. Then there's no objection, is there? Yeah. No, I mean, if, if then we can't that afford only then students? Obviously, it's Sorry? not for you. Is that only meant for students? It's a special student package and a special package for retirees. Yeah. <laughs> and a special, special package for people with no money. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, this is more back end. If they keep saying no money, no money at the back end, mm -hmm. then you do the closing schematic. Mm -hmm. Because don't believe they've got no money until you do... What you've got to do is make sure they don't say that to stop you doing your presentation. 
If they keep saying, well, I've got you and I've got no money, but I can't you and I've got no money. You answer the objections, but you must do the full presentation. Don't stop it and say, okay, it's not for you. Right? Wait till you get to the closing schematic at the end. Because the people that say no money, how many people have said no money and actually joined? Right, so I, we call that, in professional objection handling, we call that smoke, smoke screen. You know James Bond? Yeah. Right, in his James Bond car, when he's being chased by the baddies, he presses a button, all the smoke comes out the back, they can't see where they're going, the baddies crash into the tree. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? Yes. They go, Pff! there's a convenient tree they crash into. That's the smoke screen. What a smoke screen is for is for, you, for them to protect themselves and put you off the scent. Because yeah. they don't want to. They haven't been convinced enough. Yet. They're not convinced yet, that's why. Yeah. So they're telling you they're not sold yet, which means you have to yeah. increase your power. Yeah, their desire to join. You have to create more desire. You have to sizzle more. Yeah. And you have to talk about people who've got no, who joined without money. Rita's one of those people. Rita didn't pay in full when she joined, she didn't have the money. Right? But she became one of our most successful agents. And has ended up referring all of her, right? <laughs> so it's in context. And she stopped looking. It's in a, you, put it, you can just put it in the middle of a conversation. Right? So that's that one. Uh, bad blog. Too good to be true. Too good to be true. Now, you can actually say the same thing, you know what, most people said that, or you can say, how do you mean? You can respond by saying, how do you mean? So, how do you mean? How do you mean? I mean, $2,000 worth of vacation for 25 That's ridiculous. I've never heard of it before. I mean, shouldn't we be, if you're getting that kind of objection at that stage, what it's saying to you actually is that you haven't been strong enough in Correct. the early part of your presentation. So, you have to go back. Because actually you're handling those objections in your PowerPoint, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yes. But if it, if it comes up again, you know, well, you know, most people say exactly that. The, the, the most, you, you can say to your customer, most of our customers tell us your business is too good to be true. That's the most common response we get. Yeah. And that is the truth, actually, yeah. right? That's why, that's why when we meet people for the first time, we always say to them, have you ever met anyone that can supply $2,000 out of 25 ring and increase sales by 20%? And people go, what? How did you do that? That's why we say it, because we want to get a response. But as you can appreciate, every hotel in the world is never full all through the year, is it? And then you go back to that slide, back to that, back to that text. Actually, if you have done a correct presentation, we will not get that. You'll not get that, right. So, bad blog? It will be history by today. Totally agree. If, there were, if, there was a, if you saw a bad blog about a company, right, it would give you concerns, wouldn't it? Yeah. I would feel the same way if that was me. Totally agree with you. Can you please tell me the most successful companies in the world? <laughs> okay. Do you think those companies have any bad blogs or complaints? <laughs> what you can do is go on Google and show them. Show yeah. Right, now would you rather join a company with a thousand bad blogs or one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you put it in perspective, because one bad blog seems bad because it's the only one on there. Because none of you have written a blog, right? There's only one there. So it's going to seem, ooh, that's bad, there's a blog. That's bad. But if there was a hundred good blogs, the objection would never even come up. Great, fantastic, because after lunch we're going to start doing that. And we're going to focus on blogging, we're going to focus on online. Before we do that, I need to know that you have the objection handling script with you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Martin, I don't like MLM. Do you know what? I completely agree with you. I actually hate MLM myself. And in fact, do you know what MLM actually stands for? 
stands for Make Life Miserable. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? So, uh, this is nothing like MLM, and in fact, if it were, um, some of the very best agents we have working with us wouldn't have come on board. Um, when they actually looked at what it, the business was, they found that it was, in fact, extremely successful business, and they, they're making more money, they have more time, more freedom than they ever thought possible. Good response. You like that? Yes. Yeah. You just say to them, say, listen, you know what? If I was you, I'd say the same thing. Seems to be lots of T and Cs. I wouldn't join either. He's too restrictive. But you know what? Most people have said that. They've ended up becoming our best agents because they realise actually the T and Cs are customizable. They can be less T and Cs or more T and Cs depending on what package you want to buy. And those people have ended up becoming the best in the business and making the most money. Yeah. You like that? Yeah. Now, would you all agree with me that all of you need to practice objection handling? Yes. 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 I would say that that was the most important thing you need to practice right now because you don't know how to do it yet confidently. Yes. And when you, as soon as you, how you respond to people is how much money you make. Mm -hmm. yeah. It determines how you respond is directly related to your income. Yes or no, Martin? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, Mike, my, my question to you is how can you role play that objection handling as a team? How can you master objection handling in the next seven days? Role play, role play, role play. Role play. <laughs> right, role play, role play. Then you have to come back for a little bit more mentoring because you're going to lose some of the words that you've learned this afternoon. Agreed or not agree? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you're not going to have all the answers. So therefore, you have to come back within the next seven days to maximum retention learning. If you don't do that, you're going to lose it. Because what you do the most, your subconscious remembers it and makes it a habit. If you don't do it, you do it from time to time, you forget it. You have to keep relearning it all the time.